Hello, and welcome to 8.6 Notes. Uh, today's notes are perhaps the shortest set of notes uh, that we've ever had, or if not, then most definitely one of the shortest set of notes that we've ever had. We're just going to be identifying special quadrilaterals, and this chart identifies the relationships among the special quadrilaterals that we've studied in Chapter 8. So, kind of uh, analyzing this chart a little bit, Everything on this chart is a quadrilateral, so this is a chart of quadrilaterals. And as we go from the top to the bottom, we are getting more specific. Okay, we're getting, we're going from the general on the top down to the more specific on the bottom. So we're starting off with a quadrilateral. Again, a quadrilateral is a four-sided figure, but then this is getting a little bit more specific. It's a parallelogram. And a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. And then getting a bit more specific than that, we have a rectangle. And a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. And keep in mind that all rectangles are parallelograms, right? And then a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. And keep in mind that all rhombuses are parallelograms as well. And then going down even further and becoming more specific than that is a square. And a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. And keep in mind that all squares are both rectangles and rhombuses. And then all rectangles and rhombuses are parallelograms. And of course, they're all quadrilaterals. As a matter of fact, like I said earlier, everything on this chart is a quadrilateral. Okay, and then moving on to this next column, we have a trapezoid. And a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Okay, so that's a trapezoid. And then getting a little bit more specific than that is an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid, of course, but it's where both legs are congruent. Okay, and then finally we have this third column, um, which is a kite. And a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but the opposite sides are not congruent. Okay? Um, so keep in mind, um, again, this is going from the general to the specific, and that um, all squares are rectangles and rhombuses. Okay? All rectangles and rhombuses are parallelograms. All parallelograms are quadrilaterals. Okay, and then all isosceles trapezoids, of course, are trapezoids. All trapezoids are quadrilaterals, and then all kites are quadrilaterals. But also keep in mind that these three um, different columns are distinct. Um, they don't necessarily have the same features, other than the fact, of course, again, like I said earlier, they're all quadrilaterals. But a parallelogram um, is different from a trapezoid or a kite, right? A trapezoid and a kite are not parallelograms. So um, that's why they're in separate columns, because a parallelogram is not a trapezoid, is not a kite. The only feature that really that they share is that they're all four-sided figures or quadrilaterals. Okay? Um, so I guess that's about it. Um, you will be responsible for um, this information, so if this went a little bit too fast or if you need to review, uh, remember, you're in control of this presentation, so feel free to uh, pause this at any time. Also, you can find uh, this chart on page 552 of your textbook. Okay? Okay, so moving right along, um, here's a typical problem that you'll get. Number one, quadrilateral DEFG has at least one pair of opposite sides congruent. What types of quadrilaterals meet this condition? So let's go back to the chart. And um, uh, we have the criterion of at least one pair of opposite sides congruent. Well, a parallelogram has at least uh, one pair of opposite sides congruent, right? So we have a parallelogram. And also a rectangle has a uh, one pair, and also squares and rhombuses have at least one pair of opposite sides congruent, right? Uh, in rhombuses and squares, we have two pairs of opposite sides congruent, but that does meet the criterion of at least, right? At least one pair of opposite sides congruent. And also trapezoids or isosceles trapezoids uh, meet that criterion as well. So um, the one that doesn't, however, is kite, because 
um, in a kite, these two are congruent, but those are not considered opposite sides, right? Those are considered consecutive sides. So the opposite sides would have to be um, this and this, and they are not congruent. So a kite would not be, meet the criterion of at least one pair of opposite sides congruent. So um, that's your answer. The answer is parallelograms, rectangles, squares, rhombuses, and trapezoids. And um, of course, um, if you were in class and we were doing a lecture in class, um, I would be, you know, calling on you, and this would be more of a kind of a discovery method. I wouldn't just be telling you the answer, but um, for sake of this presentation, this is how I have to do it, right? And so again, the answer is parallelograms, rectangles, squares, rhombuses, and trapezoids. Okay. Okay, and moving on to problem two, we have give the most specific name for the quadrilateral. Okay, so at this point you can pause this presentation and, and tackle problem two on your own uh, by referring to the chart on the first frame of this presentation or to the chart on uh, your textbook on page 552. Uh, but for sake of this presentation, I will continue. Okay, so what you need to notice in this uh, quadrilateral is that there are two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, right? 50 is equal to 50 and 51 is equal to 51, but that those two um, congruent sides are not congruent to each other, right? One pair of congruent consecutive sides is longer than the other pair. And that's the definition, ladies and gentlemen, of a kite. So that's a kite. Okay, and the next problem, problem three, again, you can pause this presentation and tackle this problem on your own, but uh, for the sake of this presentation, I will continue. And uh, this um, quadrilateral, you need to notice that there is only one pair of parallel sides, right? This side is parallel to that side. So we have one pair of parallel sides. We also need to notice that 75 plus 62 does not equal 64 plus 80. So the um, diagonals uh, do not bisect each other. Therefore, it's not a parallelogram, right? Because a parallelogram is a parallelogram if and only if its diagonals bisect each other. So this figure is not a parallelogram. Therefore, it cannot be a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square either. Um, but we do have one pair of parallel sides. So it's a trapezoid. Okay, this is a trapezoid. Trapezoid. All right? And then uh, the last problem uh, again, you can pause this presentation and tackle problem four on your own, but for the sake of this presentation, I will uh, continue. So we need to find the most specific name for this quadrilateral. Well, um, we don't know anything about uh, anything being parallel, right? There are absolutely no chevrons on this figure. And because there's no chevrons, we can't say that any side is parallel or not to any other side, right? We can't make that assumption. So this is not a parallelogram which means it's not a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square either. And it's also not a trapezoid, uh, necessarily, um, uh, because we don't know anything about the chevrons. So the most specific name um, we can give is definitely not trapezoids, isosceles trapezoids, parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, or squares. What about kites? Can we call this a kite? Well, we can't even call this a kite either, because um, we can see that these opposite sides um, are congruent, and in a kite, this would have to be congruent with this, and then not congruent with these two, right? And because that's not the case, then this is not a kite. Um, plus, I guess another argument would be we don't really know anything about the um, lengths of the sides. Um, I don't know if that's really a good argument, um, because even if this was 9, then it definitely would not be a kite, right? Um, so... Um, I think it's mainly because these two pairs of opposite sides are not congruent to each other. We can't even call this a kite. So what can we call this? Well, the most specific thing we can call this quadrilateral is a quadrilateral. The only thing we know about this is that it's a four-sided figure. Okay? Um, so that's the end of the notes. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, as always, please feel free to contact me at your convenience, and it would be my pleasure to help you. Okay? Bye-bye.